What's up guys? Welcome back to the Cullico YouTube channel where we do all things fabrication, engineering, and design. Today's video is a fun one. We just reached the rolling chassis phase of the KC1200, the latest custom motorcycle project here at Cullico. First, I want to talk about geometry. This entire motorcycle has been modeled in CAD. It's very road racing or MotoGP inspired. Geometry coordinates are always evolving based on swing arm angle, offsets, ride height, etc. So I'm going to give you a general window that everything falls in. Head tube angle or rake around 24 degrees. Swing arm angle 8 to 10 degrees. Offsets are going to be 27 to 29 millimeter, wheelbase 57 to 58 inches, and that's going to put your trail window between 3 or 4 inches. Next, let's move to the rear suspension. This is something that I designed. Now, it's not revolutionary as we've seen the triangle link dog bone set up for decades in many applications, but this particular design is proprietary to this bike. It has a wheel rate around 2 to 1 which means when the axle path moves two inches, the shock compresses one inch. As for the shock itself, you could go so many different directions. Right now it's got a Penske. Will it make the final cut? I don't know. In its final trim, it might have to have an Olean's. The linkage components were machined out of 7075 aluminum and matte black anodized. I'll be using stock Honda CBR 1000 forks. So let's talk about the chassis itself, which in my opinion is certainly the most interesting part of this project. First off, you can see that it's a trellis design and a trellis frame grabs the engine like this. The engine itself, a stress member of the chassis versus a basket design, which will have frame rails underneath the engine in which that point the engine is not a stress member. So the entire chassis is 071 wall, 71 thousandths, 4130 chromoly steel. Chromoly is widely used in racing chassis applications across all motorsports industries. And that's because of its strength and flex properties that it offers for chassis engineering. The mainframe and the swing arm are hammer formed. What is hammer forming? Well, you can refer to a video on this channel if you want an in-depth education on hammer forming. But to put it simply, hammer sheet metal over a buck on two sides and they come together like a C channel and you weld the top seam and the bottom seam so you can make any obscure shape that you want so you're not limited to square or round tubing. So this entire chassis is assembled by an assortment of hammer form shapes. The down tube is its own shape. The spine of the frame is its own shape. Pivot area is its own hammer form parts. The swing arm dropouts or its own hammer form part. So the way that it's all designed obviously needed to be conducive to a trellis style frame. So for example, in this road racing application, you're gonna see a lot of triangulated strength in the head tube area. As we know, road racing environment, the head tube area is gonna be under massive load in high braking zones and positive G corners. Another fun part about the frame is it's gonna double as the oil tank. So all of your hollow sections here, are gonna accommodate all of the oil. So let's move on to the subframe here. This guy's wearing a lot of different hats. So I wanted to do a broke or bent sheet metal design for a lot of reasons. Number one, and most importantly, I wanted to maximize width-wise in here as I'm going to put an additional fuel cell in this area to be able to hold more capacity. So this entire cavity will be occupied by a fuel cell. Number two, with a sheet metal design, it can be made incredibly light. The backside acts as your inner fender to protect from road grime and gravel off the rear tire. The battery will also live in the back of the subframe 
and the seat will come right up on it like this. Be hanging the exhaust off the left side of the subframe. So this surface area gives you a lot of versatility in terms of bracketry and mounting things. As obscure as the sheet metal design is, I think it offers a lot of versatility and you can maximize your real estate in that area. All right, let's finish this video up with the brakes, wheels, and tires. As for brakes, it's about gotta be Brembo. I went with the GP4 RX two-piece billet calipers. This is definitely way too much brake for a rider with my skill sets, but damn, do they look trick. As for rotors, just stock CBR 1000. We also have Brembo on the rear, not GP4 RX, but will be more than enough for this application. All right, let's talk wheels. We went with the Marchesini M10 RS, which is their forged aluminum 10 spoke road race wheel. It's a 17 by 6.5 in the rear and a 17 by 3.5 in the front. My opinion, the Marchesini brand, but the 10 spoke specifically is really tough to beat for a road race application. And lastly, I've got them wrapped in Pirelli Diablo Super Corsa tires. Basically a race tire for the street. I wouldn't recommend these for a rainstorm, that's for sure. Well, that's going to conclude the overview of this rolling chassis. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for your time. I hope you were able to learn something or it inspired you in some way on your endeavors. We'll see you next time on the Culico YouTube channel. And as always, I'm rooting for you on your fabrication journey. See you later.